Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. Pray that this series of teachings on the apostolic and prophetic movement would be a blessing wherever it is heard. I pray a spirit of revelation, of wisdom, of insight upon myself, but more importantly upon each hearer, that, Lord, we would grow in these things and these truths. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Robin Jagged and Brimson. Um, I lead a, a small ministry called Servant Ministry, which is designed to equip and prepare the saints of God. And then I'm also the convener of a coalition of apostles and prophets, apostolic and prophetic ministers called Hyper Global, um, which, is, which, is really, which is really exciting. So it's on my heart to do a series of teachings on the foundations of the apostolic and the prophetic movement. And if we don't understand the foundations, then it's difficult to build. So, uh, you know, so I, I hope that you are blessed by these uh, series of teachings that I'll be doing. I, I want us to start off in this wonderful passage, Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, from verse 11. It says, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now, this is a beautiful, beautiful passage right in the middle of Ephesians. And Ephesians starts in chapter one, chapter two, with the whole, uh, the whole theme of us being seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're called to seat you know, and, and do great, great and mighty things. And then it's worked out, as we know, in, um, in, the, in, the, in the arena of human interactions, human relationships, so dealing with the flesh and all that. Before Ephesians 6, we begin to war. But uh, here, the, the Lord Jesus makes it clear that um, he, he, the Lord Jesus, was an apostle. He was, in, in Hebrews, it speaks of uh, Jesus as the apostle. He was an evangelist. He was a teacher. He was, a, he was all of the five. And he gave himself so that the church would come to the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ. Now, we, we, we're going to get there before the Lord returns. And we're going to see an amazing revival, amazing move of God before that happens. But I want us to... Um, understand the foundations for the present time move of God, the present time move of God. You say, Robin, are, are there different moves of God? Yeah, there are different eras and moves of God. And um, most recently, we had, the, first of all, we had the uh, evangelical move of God. The evangelical move of God did this. The evangelical move of God recovered the truth of the understanding, recovered the, the, the revelational truth that justification in Christ is by faith. You see, before that, it was a bit of a hit and miss with people. Are you saved? Well, am I being proud if I say I'm saved? You know, can I really know that I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that I'm saved? Is that not presumptuous on the grace of God? And so people would, would just spend time with God, just, just waiting for that, that sense of, of, uh, of, uh, of relief and conviction that, hallelujah, I have the joy of salvation. But as uh, revelation on the word of God grew, we began to understand Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, lest anyone should boast. We understood uh, John 1, 12, to, those, to all who received him, he gave the power and the authority to become children of God. We understood uh, Romans chapter 10, where it says, if, the, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So we began to understand that you can, as an act of your will, you can repent. You can say, Lord, I, I'm sorry for my sins. Uh, and dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you I recognize that you died on the cross for me. Come into my heart. And so the sinner's prayer in its different forms was... Um, was began to be understood and and uh, and propagated so we'd pray the prayer dear lord jesus i believe that you died for me on the cross come take away my sins i receive you by faith and hallelujah millions around the world began to get saved you could say 
we could put it this way, that the, the, the sinner's prayer was a prayer that activated people into belonging now to the global body of Christ, to the global church of Christ. That, that's the evangelical move. So if somebody comes to you today and says, can you really be sure that you're saved? We know, yes, yes, from our understanding of the scriptures and the word of God, I can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that I'm saved. You say, are you being proud about it? No, I'm not proud. It's, it's just, it's there for me to walk in and receive. You see, so, you, you, you know, so by an act of your will and the revelation, we understand the evangelical move was was birthed um, throughout the world throughout the nations and we understand that it's you know there's still loads of churches that don't understand the evangelical move that are still behind and they're still saying can you really really know that you're saved and we, we go there as we have an opportunity and we teach them we say yes you can really really know that you're saved so that's the evangelical move but then shortly after and uh, the, the evangelical move billy graham was a great champion of that in the 1950s and 1960s then uh, we had the charismatic move the charismatic move depending on what part of the world you know 60s in in, in parts of england and america uh, it, it's nigeria where i grew up 70s 80s uh, around the same time i believe for the south american uh, nations and th these are just general 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 dates so with the charismatic move there, there was a mystery because people began to now understand that in Acts chapter 2, after people were, were saved, the Holy Ghost came and they began to speak in tongues. In Acts chapter 10, again, Peter was preaching in Cornelius' house, and suddenly there was a, a, a rushing wind again, and everybody was filled with the tongues and, and began to, to, to praise the name of the Lord. In Acts chapter 19, some people uh, were spoken to by Paul, said, you know, have you received the Holy Spirit? We didn't know about the Holy Spirit. So Paul prayed for them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they, they began to speak in tongues, and they also began to prophesy. Uh, so people began to realize that actually, apart from being saved, there's a further blessing that God has for you where you can be filled with the holy spirit and begin to speak with other tongues I'm like wow you know this is this is great this is this is really good and so that gave birth to the charismatic movement so the charismatic movement is understood for the, the second blessing the blessing of belief after you've believed on the lord jesus christ and you've been saved you can be activated into the gift of tongues and the fullness of the holy spirit and again the questions were asked what can you can you just do that by faith yeah, you can do that by faith. Doesn't Paul say that do all speak in tongues? Yeah, do all speak in tongues. So, but if you want to, you can. He's not saying that you can't. It's like saying, are all saved? No, not everybody's saved. But if it's in your heart to speak in tongues and be filled with the Spirit and filled with, filled with the Holy Ghost, then, then you can. And so uh, a similar activation on uh, activation prayer based on this uh, revelation from God was, was released to the church. I remember my experience, you know, uh, I'd love listening to people speaking in tongues around me. And one day this preacher was saying, and said, hey, you know, come out, let, let's lay hands on you like it was done in the Bible and you'll be able to pray in tongues. And, uh, you know, it, it took some hours. I remember it's a bit of a funny story. Went with my with my Paul, my older brother, and we went and we, you know, we started praying in tongues. It wasn't fluent at first, but there was just this, this joy that came as we just uttered these little syllables. Oh, oh. <laughs> and we carried on hallelujah but there was a joy of the holy ghost and so we received the, the, the gift of tongues we began to pray in other tongues and um, and the, the doorway to other things began to open for us so that's the charismatic move you know people say can, can you pray in tongues at will well can you be saved at will yeah, you, you, you purpose in your heart. Paul is very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He said, I will pray with the understanding and I will pray in the spirit. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about the classification of tongues in just a little while. But uh, yes, you can, Paul said, I can pray in the spirit. I can pray in my understanding and I can also pray in the spirit. I can pray in tongues. We can just just tune into the Holy Spirit and just begin to pray in tongues. It's, you know, you can just, just flow. You can just flow in the, in the simple grace of, of praying in tongues. Like I said, we'll, we'll explain it just a little bit about the classifications and the protocols of different types of tongues. But that's the charismatic movement, understanding that after you've been born again, 
if you desire, and which fool wouldn't desire, you know, hands can be laid upon you and you can be receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and begin to pray in other tongues. In other words, it's something that's given to you. Now, so that's the charismatic move. But after the charismatic move, there's another move of God, and we are presently in that move of God. You see, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, follow the way of love, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For everyone who speaks in the tongue doesn't speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit, but everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. So Paul here is saying that I want you, I'm happy you speak in tongues, but I even want you more than that to prophesy. I want you to be able to prophesy. So this is now a third wave or a third move of the spirit introducing us to the apostolic and prophetic movement or for short, the apoprophetic prophetic movement. Now, the apoprophetic prophetic movement has us this understanding that yes, we can be saved by faith. Yes, we can be filled with the spirit and speaking tongues, uh, but there's another blessing where we can also all prophesy. You say, Robert, can everybody prophesy? <laughs> yes, you can all prophesy. You say, don't have to wait on God for the, the shaking to come and the, the, the tremor to come and the angel to come. You can stir up and exercise yourself in that gift by faith when you understand how the gift of prophecy operates. And again, I'm going to teach that how you can be activated for everybody. If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit you can prophesy <laughs> you, you know don't stone me yet you know I'll, I'll do I'll, I'll cover that I'll cover that ground also but the understanding of the gift of prophecy being given to everybody that is a foundational pillar of the apo prophetic movement where everybody is activated not just in tongues but in in the gift of prophecy. So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to pause there and I'll come back explaining, like I promised, the different classifications of tongues and then how it is that biblically we can all prophesy. But until then, God bless you. Thank you. Bye.